Whoa, I've got Go. it really loud today. You do. I like that, I'm though. I'm feeling it, you guys. You're drawn. You're drawn. Drawn to fan to see. Oh, yeah. Drawn? Yeah, we're drawn. Oh, who's here? Uh, what you, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, okay. guys. Okay. We're on episode... Christy Lamore, the master. No, Lamore. Just Christy Moore. What are we on? Brown. Episode 22? What 22. episode are we on? It's Groundhog. Just right, Groundhog Day. It's it's every day. Episode 224. That's what, that's 224. what it is. 224. <laughs> Another episode, day. Eric Burkert. <laughs> Eric Burkert has joined us. On another day. Yes. Oh, the dogs. Wait till you guys hear this story. Another drawing. Amanda Putnam Palmer. An- Amanda's here. Phoenix. And Cheryl is she. Wait, it's really loud. Dun. You're drawn to fantasy with your host, Tony D. And his lovely wife, Angie D. Let's not forget the crazy puppies. Yes. With special guest stars, David Peterson mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Eric mm-hmm. Burkert mm-hmm. and Molly mm-hmm. Partridge. Mm-hmm. Molly, Molly, dun, Molly dun, Partridge. Dun, dun, dun. Hey I called guys. I called her Molly Porridge. I'm sorry, Molly. I, I like don't, Molly Porridge. I, I kind of like Molly Porridge. I, I think that should be I feel like there would be a little a little hedgehog named Molly Porridge. Molly Porridge. My name is Molly Porridge. It's uh Tuesday. It's Tuesday, Ange. April 14th. Um here we are. We're back. We're going to go back Jack and do it again. We're going to do some more drawing, some more well, actually no drawing today, more painting. If you are um, drawn to fantasy, fantasy, like we are, we're doing, uh, you'll see a fairy in front of you, a uh, watercolor fairy, all nice and dry now, guys. Uh, we're doing color studies. Wait, interjection. Today, there's somebody watching who people have mentioned many times. Iris Compete. Compete? How do you pronounce your, I always wonder, Iris, We've had many people come here on Drawn to Fantasy and ask if we're familiar with your work, which obviously... Are we familiar with we your work? Are. Yes, I could go bust out my sketchbook I have. Um, the off-spoken but hardly, very rarely seen, Iris. Um, if you're just joining us, uh, first of all, thanks for joining us, um, Iris. I want you to meet our friend Molly Porridge. Um, <laughs> We are doing a color study. What is a color study? Before you do a big fancy pants painting of whatever you're going to paint, I like to figure out what the colors are. So um, here are some examples of color studies for this beetle guy. You can see, look, three times the charm, three times the charm. That's how I figured it out. So yesterday, Ange, we had, we've been working on this, this orchid fairy all week last week that we're going to paint. And we got one color study down, and it's finally dry. And look at it, it's nice and, it's, it got, it's got a little tear. Sorry, Dave Peterson, it's going to have a little tear when I send it. It's nice and warped, look at that, really fancy. But not bad, right? I think it's pretty good. And uh, so now today we're going to do an, uh, another one. Maybe if we... Um, if oh, I... by the way, speaking of another one, maybe if you went, if you are on the Fans of Drawn to Fantasy Facebook page, yes, Tony, you posted this as a high-res image that people could print out and paint along with you today. That's right, I did. Uh, I think I ultimately put it on both. I put it on the group page and then I put it on the regular Facebook. I think I did, yeah, I think I did. I can't remember now. Um, there, there's, there's the Instagrams and the Twitters. There's so many things I gotta try to try to remember the to sense. Places. The face place, it's, come on. <laughs> us Gen Xers, it's a little hard for us to keep keep on top face. of them. Yeah, there's my, my, my place, my face. Um, <laughs> So we used a, for our design, we were inspired by this, the Psychopsis Papio. really want to know why they called it Psychopsis. Like, is that seems, because I see the word psycho and I'm thinking it's like a psycho orchid, but um, otherwise known as the butterfly orchid. Um, we use that as our inspiration for the design. But yesterday we used the coloration of the Phalaenopsis or the Buena Blush orchid as our inspiration so today i'm closing the book on orchids throwing it out 
Yes, Angel Shandy coloring along. This is awesome. Awesome. Angie, I have a couple of things that we're going to try for inspiration today. I have a book of butter. Molly Porridge, this is for you. Because this is not just a book of butterflies and moths, Molly Porridge. It is a book of butterflies and moths from the UK, I believe. Yes, I bought this in London. So this is all butterflies that us Americans will never know. We will be denied. But Molly Porridge sees these every day when she goes out on her morning strolls. And Iris probably too. I think believe Iris is in uh, Wales as well. Anyway, Ooh, we're going to go through. That. That's nice, huh? Look at that. It's Look at that. Just, it's kind of Luna Mothish. I think I feel like this green is just calling to us. We might have to do that. I also just have Just a little shout out by the way. How's everybody doing today? Yeah, how is everybody? How's doing? everybody feeling today? Check in with yourself. Give a moment to just take a breath. And you're here with us today. I think she's saying that to me because I was talking so fast. And so no, oh, not at all. Sure. I'm just... I ate a chocolate right before we started. It's like <laughs> a little... Just one? Just one. Unlike <laughs> someone else in our house, which we're going to share with we're you. We're going to talk all about that. But before we do that, this is the other color inspiration. Not necessarily this ginormous sunflower. And you, I think you bought me this book. This is selections of the most beautiful botanical book in the world. The Botanical Prints from wow. Hortus... Istatensis. Guy's got to come up with a better title. Just, just telling you on that. But anyway, some really nice color plates and more color palettes. Look at that. It's pretty awesome. Some irises. So good. There's good. a. Grand. That's a peony. Wait, we have a birthday in the house. Dang, do we? All right. So you, let's find out the birthday. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick a butterfly. Okay. For our first it's color. It's David pack. May's birthday. David May, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Tell me, David May is turning 16 today. Did you know that, Ange? <laughs> That's it? right. He's celebrating his sweet 16. Oh, is he going to get his driver's license? Yeah, he is. Yeah, we should post our senior photo for <laughs> David because... <laughs> he's not 16. He's, well, you know, it's in spirit. It's in mind, right, David? You know that. <laughs> happy birthday, David Happy May. birthday, David May. It's David May Day. It is. If it was May, it would be David May Day. But instead, it's April. It's like tax eve. Are taxes due tomorrow? No, they extended it. Yeah. All right. Sorry, okay. energy. I got excited. No, no, it's David May's birthday. You I should know. be excited. Right, I'm working. I'm, I'm doing. I'm looking for the. I'm looking for that moth. That that moth that we both kind of stopped and paused on. And now, of course, I can't find the darn thing. <gasps> there it is. Ah. You know what it is? It's a small emerald. It really is. What other colors would you add, though? Well, you know, there's a little hint of, of almost an orangey yellow in it that I kind of like. I might push that out a little more. Let me just see if there's any... something that's more dra more different from our piece yesterday. I feel like green... Like this? Hmm. Death's Head Hawk Moth? Hmm. No? Okay, let me keep going. Yeah. You know I love a moth, Ange, over the butterfly. I feel like the moths always get the bad rap. Everyone loves a butterfly, but moths, and even moths, the Luna moth kind of soaks up a lot of the air, you know? So it's well, like the rest of them, people are just not as... Yeah, they're picking them off the grill of their car. They're, you know, they're fluttering their around their... Your... Ooh, that's... Well, you like that? I don't know. Or that? I don't know. Do you like that one? I don't know. More green. Well, hold on. I've only got so many moths here. There's only so many moths in England, Ange, before we run out of moths. What's Let that me... moth on the cover? That's, that's a butterfly. Oh, those are butterflies. Those are butterflies. I mean, we can do a butterfly. Let's just look here. Let's just look. We're all doing it together. We're all in this together. Oh, even the dogs. Even the dogs are in it together. That's kind of interesting. A leopard moth. It's got some funky. Ooh, look at the green on that dude. It's just like green and white. Okay. Ooh, an oak egger. They're like, yeah, great. I tuned into Tony D yeah, today, and all I did was look one. at a bug book. Ooh, how about that one? That's the one we said. No, is it? No, yeah. that was the small emerald. <laughs> this is the large emerald. As you can tell, see, this one's much smaller. How about an orange? Somebody said, how about something orange? Let's oh. go, where's butterflies in there? All right, all right. Oh, here we go. S speak and you shall get. Keep going. I keep going back to the death's head hawk moth. Okay, let's do it. We're going to do it. We're going to try. It may be complete. Fia okay, never mind. I'm doing just going to pick a butterfly. <laughs> You've, you've pushed me into a corner. <gasps> oh, what about with like the, maybe with the it's, one on the left? Top? It's not far from what we did yesterday, but there's something about the blue, getting rid of all the pink and going blue, ashy, blue, gray, and rust. I'm seeing hearts. I'm seeing hearts. You like that, guys? 
If you like it, give me a heart. Oh, I, I see a heart. It popped on your wife's phone because your phone died. Glad you're still here, dude. Good. Thanks for making it, Derek. Whew. We thought we lost you for a minute. All right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go for an orange tip, which is a beautiful butterfly only found in Molly Porridge's backyard. Apparently, we don't get those here in America. We have other things. But Can I see here for we a second? Have... No, I'm starting. Uh-huh. That's it. It's too late. It's... But are you going to put like some other markings Yeah, of it? course I am. I'm not just going <laughs> to sit you. with that. Even Mimi doesn't want that, see? Okay, okay. All right, so we're going to start with... Well, first I'm going to start. I do love royal monarchs oh. as well. A monarch. I do like... I like the colors of that one. Of a monarch like or what I painting I... with the colors of the wind. <laughs> I'm painting with the colors of sun. <laughs> painting with the colors of nature. Here we go. A little water. Get this party started. Yep. So you're on just your regular laser paper right now. Yeah, this is the heavy stuff. This is that 32-pound ream of paper I found over at Staples, Ange. I've shown it before when I draw. I like to draw on it. Pippin likes it as well. Listen, Pippin had a rough night. Pippin had a... You tell him about Pippin's night here while I start to put a little bit of paint down. I'm using a, an acrylic. This is antique unbleached titanium, a.k.a. antique white. Just the, the good old heavy body acrylic. Yep. How much do you use? When you were a kid and you put toothpaste on your toothbrush and you barely put any on and your parents yelled at you, that's how much you use. <laughs> that's about how what, that, what you need. All right. I'm getting it very, very... Lots of water, lots of wet. See that? So when I put it down, see that? It's like a, a little... Like a little sheen. All right. So here is... I've, obviously, we are dealing with the overarching pandemic on lockdown here in our homes but sometimes we're reminded of the small challenges in life (laughs) such as when pippin appeared last night holding a ziploc bag that once carried about 25 to 30 to 30 hershey's kisses from easter yes and he did this at 11 30 at night when we were literally like let's turn the tv off and go to bed he brought it he was really proud. There was only three left in the bag. He left one for each of our family members. He ate an entire bag of Hershey Kisses. So if, if anyone has a dog or knows a couple of things about dogs, first thing everyone always thinks is, oh my God, there's like three things that are super lethal to a dog. It's like onions, garlic, grapes, grapes, grapes raisins, and chocolate. And chocolate. Never feed a dog chocolate. And here he is. He's eaten a bag of Hershey Kisses. By the way, I was confused where he ate them because unlike a human who would unwrap the Hershey Kiss and the foil on that little tiny thin piece of paper, he ate it all. There was no evidence. I'm thinking he's taken the bag, ripped it open, and spilled them somewhere. Surely there are 30, 25... It's growing. The bag's growing. Surely there are 25... Hershey kisses under a table or a chair that I'm just not seeing. No, he ate all of it. Wait, no, there was some tin, some foil shards left, and one of those little Hershey's paper ribbons that sticks out at the top. That That's said, Happy all Easter. that was left. Yeah, it literally said Happy Easter. Yes, thankfully it was not dark chocolate. They are milk chocolate. And frankly, are they really even chocolate at all? They're well, crazy. apparently not. We, we called the hospital last night, uh, the emergency line. Yet. They said, how many did he eat? We told him how many he ate. They went, he's fine. He'll be totally fine. He's going to have an upset stomach. And he's going to be kind of mm-hmm. jazzed from all the sugar. Because mm-hmm. look, if any of us ate 25 Hershey Kisses, I know I'd be up all night. And actually, Pippin was up for part of the night. He was fine. He's fine. His tummy's been fine. So far, knock on wood. Uh, but he has been running a lot of energy. like a whole maniac. Gonna do, uh, David Peterson says, Pippin's poop will be sparkling with foil. You have no idea. Maybe it'll just be wrapped in that foil Little wrapping. foil ball. I asked about the foil. They said, don't worry about the foil. He'll pass that too. All right. Good Good to know. I'm mixing raw umber and ash. If you remember yesterday, these are, this my uh been lately been my favorite for... Um, making shadow a very cool brown with a very cool blue and by cool i mean they wear sunglasses and leather jackets that's how cool they are these two guys look at that there it is mixing right in front of your eyes to make a nice warm brownie gray (laughs) normal amount for humans to eat not normal for oh by the way so sophia is so 
such a great kid. I want to brag about our kid. She's still, she's, tw- she's going to be 13 next month. And she, we were like, hey, listen, what do you want to do for Easter? She's like, I still want an Easter egg hunt. Like, I, it's, she still gets totally excited. For the Easter bunny. For the come. Easter bunny and hunting Easter eggs. And so um, I'm like, all right, I'll let the Easter bunny know. And we're going to make sure there are Easter eggs out in the yard. So, you know, those are her eggs. Those, the eggs filled with candy, that's her candy. The leftover Hershey Kisses was our candy, Ange. It was our... Well, you had that, li- you had like a small handful yesterday. Yeah, because so you... I'm not a huge Hershey Kiss fan, believe it or not. I, I like M&M, more an M&M guy. I love an M&M. Thankfully, he didn't eat the M&M's. No, Those hungry. were done. I ate all the no, M&M's. Okay, guys. Tony, you are painting in your shadows right now. I am. I'm, you know, some of us, you know, we live in the shadows, we dance in the shadows, or dance in the dark, and I am today painting shadows, so I'm just, you could see I'm putting it on, I'm a little looser than I was yesterday, I didn't paint in between now and then, um, just putting in some quick shadow, letting it do its thing. If you guys have questions, we've been doing all the talking here today. Well, because... Because uh, we're like... Sad, and we're missing all that candy. I know, but I did make one of those frothy coffee things again this morning. You did. That was good. Well, but Ange was up at 4.30. I woke she was up, up at 4.30. Because the dog was up. I don't know why he'd Pippin be awake. woke up. I was nervous that he was going to be really sick, so I stayed with him. And then I just didn't go to bed. And then you woke up at 7.30, and you're like, uh, when did you wake up? No, I woke up. Oh, I woke up just before 7, laid in bed, then realized you weren't there, and the dog wasn't Wait, there. laid in bed and then realized I wasn't there? Well, you know. <laughs> I gotta check, check and see what's going on. I thought maybe oh she's in the bathroom. Nope, she's not in the bathroom. She's not coming back. So in... then T came down to go back to bed. So I actually woke up at like eleven fifteen because I had gotten you got a little four hours of sleep. You got last a little night. sleep. Yeah. Well, we were watching the um, so yes, don't ninety. Go on a coffee. We were watching the ninety day fiance tell all reunion, which if you've been, you know, that's where we're at. That's what we're reduced to now. <laughs> all all culture has turned to. Tiger King and 90 Day Fiance. Shadows are in. <laughs> gonna hit it with the hair dryer. This is where I'm gonna tell you the really important thing about art. And the most important thing that you must never do is, and then, but, and also, and don't forget, and now you know, that's it. That's all the, um, the key to creating art. That is it. Now you know the secret. That was it. <laughs> Um, I'm really tripped out. Someone just said, hi guys, and their name is Mel Burker. Any relation to Eric Burker? Oh my God. Mel Burker and Eric Burker. We're all the Burker family is here. It's still not quite dry. I got to hit it one more time. You know, but why I'm drying this, Angie, it occurs to me that I do have a few more of that, the secret of art. And, um, you know, one must never forget to, and always... And let's not forget. And that's my other uh, secret of art that I live by. <laughs> All right, I'm ready to paint my orange chip. Can also, also oh, yeah, go ahead. No, you I want to take a moment to brag. I don't want to. I don't want to give anything away. Well, we give stuff away every no, day. No, not that stuff. We give away. But you got contacted fantasy. by a major media outlet today about this drawing. about drawn to fantasy. That was pretty. Cool. Um, so we will be posting that when it, when and if it gets uh, printed, published, whatever it's going to be. Run. A major news outlet contacting Tony wanting to hear all about... Uh, that was pretty exciting. Inspi- inspiring yourself in this yes. uh, challenging time. It is. It is. Um, I... Okay. I'm pulling out one of my favorite colors. You know, people ask you what your favorite color is sometimes, and uh, that's a hard question to answer, but Naples yellow really is one of my favorite colors. I really like this color. Why? Well, I'm Italian and it's Naples, but also it's just a, it's color of a banana. It's not banana though. It's not, well, it's not banana yellow, it's, it's Naples like, yellow. But, but if I had to say a diluted version of this, close to that. But, but the tips will be different. Well, of course they'll be different. No, I mean, I'm just We're going to brulee those tips, Ange. Brulee! We're going to brulee them. So we use a little Naples yellow. I'm going to thin it way out. A um, couple announcements, yes. minor ones, nothing too crazy. Tomorrow's a crazy day for us. 
And she has a book out. She's going to be doing... Oh, um, nice. You're going to read... Are you reading tomorrow? Yeah. I'm reading and I'll you're read. reading. I'll read tomorrow. Well, you're on XM. You're on Mindy. Yes. In the okay. morning. Sirius You'll be XM. live. Live. Sirius XM live. Tune in uh, on Kids Place Live around 9.30 a.m. I will be going live with Absolutely Mindy on the Absolutely Mindy show. Terrific. And we're going to be talking about uh, probably books, creativity, <laughs> the magical yet. I love talking with Mindy, so I don't know. I don't want to guarantee anything we're going to be discussing. You never we're can always, tell with Mindy. She's, never, she's always maybe, got something. Our mutual love of Dolly Parton, perhaps. Oh, is she a big Dolly Parton fan as well? Oh, are you kidding? She gave Dolly Parton a copy of my book, I Want to Be a Cowgirl. Oh, that's right. She I'm had done an interview with Dolly. That's right. And did she get a photo of Dolly with it? <laughs> it's the craziest story. She told Dolly about me. Okay. She, and for those of you who don't know, I love, I'm obsessed with Dolly Parton. When I was seven years old, I have a book asked what you wanted to be. When you grew up, and I wrote Dolly Parton. She's not lying. She I really does. Dolly. I have that book. I've seen it. And um, I, she gave Dolly a copy of my book, I Want to Be a Cowgirl, because I also dedicated the book to Dolly To Parton, Dolly. That's right. I remember that. The first yes. cowgirl I ever wanted to be. Yes. And Dolly took a photo with my book. Okay. I remember that part. Okay. But then. Her publicist <gasps> got fired that same week there was a big blow up with her publicist so basically the publicist who was in charge of getting the photos and the press stuff didn't get that photo to, to our friend to absolutely mindy who was going to share that photo with me oh. so i know yes yeah, dolly is a saint i agree i have listened to dolly parton's america especially with children's lit she's a very big advocate right? oh are you kidding the imagination library mm -hmm. i mean has donated over 100 million books to children i've done events with the imagination library i've donated books to the imagination library not that she's keeping track no, no. are you kidding if you guys know dolly please tell let her me know. tell Ange. let her know and yes the question is did I want to be Dolly as much as Tony wanted to be Elton? <laughs> I think um, there is an equal. Well, no, I take that back. I've got his Your entire. Your love for Elton. You have I've a got pinball a, I've machine. Got, I have a pinball. Well, I'd, got, I'd get you a nine to five pinball machine if you wanted <laughs> one. But it's also my, um, my. I have like all, all his albums from the. I don't think you have all of her discography, do you? Okay. Do you really have to bring it? So, yeah, okay. Yeah. This is not a competition. Oh, I know. But the question was, are you as big a fan? And, you know, I'm just saying. Listen, my, your love can run so deep for someone. But mine really supersedes just the music. My love for Dolly. There you go. Well, hey, listen. Elton's very philanthropic. He's, you know, the Elton John AIDS Foundation has raised millions of dollars. And I believe he's raising money for um, health workers dealing with this crisis. But... That's not about Elton John. It's about Dolly today. And it's about you. And it's about your book that's coming out tomorrow. Oh, yeah. So tomorrow I'm going to be doing Kids Place Live on Sirius XM, 9.30 a.m. Tune in. And there I will be. And then what else you got going on tomorrow? Is that it? Uh, I think I'm going to do some you going to do Facebook lives, lives too? Instagram lives. I'm going to do a, a story time of the magical yet. Although it was supposed to come out today. Today would have been the day. I would have been on tour. Today. Today, I would have been. Well, you would have been Jersey. on tour yesterday, yeah. Yeah, that's but right. I would have been in, doing events in Jersey, I think, today. Wow. Um. So. So uh, there's that. Yeah. So there's that. Um. Right. And then tomorrow, I'm going to be on um Simon and Schuster's Facebook page, aka Simon Kids, and I'm going to read with a snack. That's Why doesn't a, Elton John have a theme park? Dolly does. He, yeah, he really should. I think Elton John's. <laughs> Elton World. I think Elton John's life is a theme park. <laughs> um, I'll be here at Simon Kids tomorrow at two p.m. Eastern, reading this book. Perhaps you've heard of it. It's called Kenny and the Dragon, which kind of sounds like Benny and the Jets, which is an Elton John song, but that's beside the point. Um, <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to be reading that and having a snack so you can eat along with me. 
Uh, figure out what the snack's gonna be. Well, listen, if it's Graham. If you've read this book, you know that it should be creme brulee. But that's a that's a tall order to ask of anyone, let alone you. I have heavy cream and eggs. I mean, and sugar. I could probably whip up. Even if you faked it. Even if you bought me a plastic one. Frankly, oh, wait, even where do you just happen to well, find Sculpey a plastic or, creme brulee? Well, listen, if you gave me a ramekin and and we just painted no, the edge. Make one now. now oh I'm well, I, oh, I like I like the way I'm you think. Make my, I'm anyway. Make you creme brulee, honey. I'm going to be eat creme brulee tomorrow at facebook.com, Simon Kids, at 2 o'clock. And then you can watch me scramble from this to draw for you guys live in, within the hour. Oh, my gosh. Busy day. Busy day. But if you need a little more Tony D in your life and you're a fan of Dungeons & Dragons, this dropped today, which is Into the Ultra. It was an interview that came out uh, this morning. Uh, Brian Stillman is a director and a documentarian, and he did a documentary you may have heard of called I the Beholder, which is all about the artist who worked on Dungeons and Dragons. And he's just doing a bunch of podcasts with people during the quarantine. So he asked me, and I, uh, we talked about my beginnings working for TSR and Dungeons and Dragons and Planescape and all that stuff. So if you want to deep dive into that nerdy world of role playing game, that is it. I put the link on my Facebook page. Shouldn't be too hard to find. Um, Kyle Imthern asked, what's the coffee this morning? Google Cloud Coffee. Two tablespoons of instant coffee, two tablespoons of sugar, two tablespoons of hot water. Whisk it and many minutes. A big emphasis on the word whisk here. She, whisk. She's whisking that like uh, my, you're on a, one of those food challenges. Literally, my arm looks like a puppeteer right now. Like one super pumped up, and then the others just withered away. Yeah, it's like an extra I arm. Out that right bicep. She did. Well, we got to get our, you know, our exercise. So That's it. And she's then you doing put it. that foamy, frothy goodness over some milk, almond, coconut, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. whole, she's, two percent, whatever you want. Whatever your jam is. And then you mix it, and it's so good. Yeah, we are wired up. You are, definitely. We both are, yeah. Oh, I had that chocolate, although it's worn out now, so you can tell I'm more subdued and ready to take a nap. Well, because I slept until 11. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I never do. I'm an early bird. You really are. Yeah. All right, so I got a little bit going on, Angela. I'm doing. I'm just very, very simple. It looks boring, but what I'm doing is I'm laying in this kind of Naples and these little kind of gray. I'm kind of matching that in her torso here and i just uh, you know eh, just a little bit before i kind of jump in and get in get crazy with this orange and eh, maybe even the blue a little bit um i'm trying to think where i want these orange tips i'm wondering if i want them on these leaf wings i'm thinking these might be where we do the orange i think that'd be kind of different quarantine coffee cardio i should work out video making it oh yeah <laughs> just just that yeah all right, I'm looking at... Does it work with hot milk? You can put the foam over hot milk, yes. Yeah, you did that the other day for me. Yeah, it's very good. I'm going to use that for the darker parts of it, but I think I need a little bit more of a gold one for the lighter parts. There's a little orange in it. It's got a little orange. Very, very, very little orange. I'm thinking this gold yellow is going to do the trick. Gold, this deep not yellow. Not to be confused with old yellow. No, not gold to be confused. Yellow. Gold this yellow. This is a deep yellow. I'm going to get the... If I get the yellow in first, Angela, I think I can figure out where other colors should go before I... Going deeper. This yellow is super potent. This tube of paint is about 400 years old. I just barely use any of it. So I'm just going to literally, to extract it for this dummy, uh, or this dummy, for this rough sketch. Look, you see that? That's it. I'm done. I'm good to go. Dang. How long would one tube last? Uh, honestly, I've had many too. It, it depends on the color and how much you they like it. That, you yeah, some of them dry out before I use them. And then some of them I get to the end because I just use them all the time. Yeah, you know, that that uh, I use um, ivory a lot, and I where would my book go? And and I use um. What happened? Did it smear? Yeah, I set the book down. That's easy. Here, here's a so you can see I I I dripped right there. So I got a wet a wet brush. I'm gonna squeeze all the water out of it. See that? Just mopping it up. There you go. That's how you do that. In case you find that you've dripped. I, not that I need to be that clean, because this is just a color study after all, but... If you did it on a piece. If I did it on a piece, that's pretty much what I would have done. There's my art. Just needed to bring it back. So it's kind of a gradient. 
So I'm going to go really strong. Oh, so it's gradient. So then let's do this. So the, I'm working on a bit of an incline, a bit of an angle. So this is facing towards the ground now. Upside down. Yep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load it with water. Now, when we go to do the final, you probably notice this a lot more than what I'm going to do now. The water won't drip past where I tell it by putting the puddle here. It's a controlled puddle with this brush, right? So the more pigment I add, it's going to run. Don't forget to make notes, someone said. Nah, that's too late. Thanks, Ella. It's too late for me, Ella. <laughs> so you can see it's puddling up near the bottom, and it won't. It will dry there if I don't mess with it, if I leave it alone. <laughs> so I'm just going to dab a little more, let that run down. What's it? Dan Hardesty, the lone violin while you were making that correction. So sad. I know. It's like it you can't even plan that. It just did it on its own. Anyway, you can see I got a nice little gradient going. I'm going to let that dry for a second if I need to speed it up, which I often do. If you don't like the size of that drip and it terrifies you, I mean, it's not going to go anywhere. It's just going to hang out there. And I'm talking about this drip right there. I know you, Angie. You just want to pop it. You just want to make it go away. Same thing. I can take a brush. I can squeeze the water out of it. And I can just set it right here. And it's just going to, see? Sucked it right up. There you go. Pulled the, pulled the extra water out. Wow. That's magic. That was... What kind of paper? David Howe. Laser paper. 30 pounds. David Howe, come on. Come, come on, how David. How you been here every day? You should, you, you should, should know. You should be telling question. you should be telling the telling everybody. It's just printer paper. <laughs> I've done it on all kinds of paper. The point is it's just a printout. So if I mess it up, guess what? No big whoop. I can just print another one. In fact, I've already printed another one and we'll paint that. So that's really the point of it. And it'll get crinkly and corrugated. All we're trying to do is figure out what the colors are for this thing before <clears> we start really painting it. What did I'm you draw in your career? Hold on, let me dry it real quick. I want to get to the orange. <laughs> wait for it, wait for it. Here, I'll zoom back out and see what's going on there. Probably a more exciting shot than just a close-up. There you go. It actually dries a little light. I don't know if you can tell, but the, once the paint starts to dry, it's a little lighter. All right. Joshua Canfield asks, what did you draw in your career that you felt bettered yourself as an artist? Ooh. Well, everything I draw betters me. I mean, it's all, it's either A, practice, or it's um, learning to draw something that I've never drawn before. I'll give you an example for the, um, for the new uh, Kenny and the Dragon book. Here, I'll show you. Ah, you need to get painting on this painting. Uh, there's an old-timey car. I've never drawn anything like that before. So I bought one on a toy car on eBay and kind of figured out how to draw it. So I, the point is that with, it, with every project, I seem to learn a little more or how to draw something that maybe I didn't know how to draw before. As far as really formative stuff, now I'm going backwards. I, I, now this is just water in the brush, and I'm just kind of moving the paint. Um... <laughs> It's really formative stuff. You know, I, I, I often cite the stuff I did for, for Dungeons and Dragons, mostly because it taught me a, a lot about world building and did not think about um, just like a character, which is what we're painting today, but also about the clothing and the attire, the weapons they use, the setting, the architecture, etc. So that was very formative. And then I think with, with the Spiderwick Field Guide, that really had a, a big impact on me because it um, I really pushed myself to paint at a level of detail that I'd not really painted at before uh, with those things. I re I, we looked, Angie and I went to Chicago where they have a huge collection of um, John Jay Audubon's um, lithographs and, and original books when he was traveling around the country and capturing birds and, and painting them from life. And I was able to really look at them up close. And this was very informative to the, the techniques I used when I painted the uh, Spiderwick Field Guide. To the fantastic world around you. Just hit that with a dryer. There's a nice little gradient going on there. So I don't want to dry up any of that. I want to just... It's going to take a while for that little drop to dry. I might have to 
soak it up. I think I'm going to have Richard to. Richard Balsley Bal dropped out of graphic design program because he couldn't figure out how to make gouache work because it doesn't dry the same as the color in the tube. Oh, yeah. That's true. Um, which is why I always put a uh, coat of um, clear varnish over everything Tony after I'm Jacobson's done. Tony Jacobson's watching. Oh, Tony Jacobson. That's awesome. Big shout out to Tony Jacobson who gave me many opportunities early in my career working on... Cricket and Spider magazine, which was always fun. I've mixed a little bit of um, ivory in with the Naples. I just want to get this a little more opaque. I feel like I overdid the spotting and stuff here, so I'm going to go back in on it a little bit and kind of whitewash it, Ange. Just whitewashing over here. You could intentionally make it, like use your blow dryer to make that spray out if you wanted to, couldn't you? Somebody was asking. I could use my blow dryer to... Like to make the color, like if you pooled it and then use the color, the blow dryer to push it out. Interesting technique. I don't know how well that would, how much control I'd have. I feel like it would just blow it willy-nilly any any old way. Um, Ooh, experiment. You could. You certainly could. I, I feel like a straw and blowing might almost be more, might give you more desirable results. More control. Possibly. Canned air. Or can't well, that's a lot of air. That's just now you're just talking about did that. that's like a rudimentary airbrush at that point. Stephen Boucher did that for this daily monster project. Ooh, all right. I'm just doing some more ivory just to kind of I'm going to put a tiny touch of yellow in it from the yellow I used on the wings here. <laughs> ah, there we go. That's what I wanted. A lot of field guide fans. Oh, yeah, thank you. That was such a fun... It was a crazy time, but it was a good time. It was the best of times, <laughs> the worst of times. A lot of art to do in a very short amount of time. I'm just covering up some of this modeling. It was a little overkill for me. And again, this is all about solving, so I don't know if this is the right, right way to do this. I'm just kind of playing right now. So we're looking at... A orange tip butterfly is kind of our reference here, our inspiration for our palette. And there's a little tiny wisp of blue in it. I'm going to grab the ash blue that I used in the shadow. Yes, agreed. And I'm just going to use it straight out of the tube. Yes. And I'm going to wash some of that into the body and the torso and maybe the face, like the butterfly itself has. Like, kinda... Phoenix James said, Spiderwick was my childhood. Aww. Aww. Thank, thank you. I had such a good time working on it. So did Holly. So did Ange was there for all of it as well. It was a, uh, ooh, that's kind of interesting. The dark face, the blue. Eric Mag, Mag, uh, Magnuson said, my dream would be a Game and Dieterlisi collab. Ooh, Game and Dieterlisi collab. You know what? There was almost a Game and Dieterlisi collab early on. Um, Neil had requested that I illustrate an alphabet book that he had done. And I want to say as a Christmas card, Ange, is that what it was? It was a Christmas, was a Christmas card, card that he did that he gave out to like friends, friends and, and fam industry and family. Yes, that was kind of, and the if you were a fan of Neil's, you got all the references in this card. So basically, C is for Coraline, you know, that kind of thing. And, and deep it was it like was very... I, listen we're neil gaiman fans and even i was like i don't i don't know who some of these characters are so i i replied that i would love to do a book with neil but maybe not this book and um that was the end of that <laughs> never heard from him again <laughs> i mean I've, I've known neil I mean... for a long time he's a lovely person he's very nice he's very supportive he's... and he, we did see him at the at the national book fair that year. Afterwards. This is a good story because yeah. Holly Black, uh, who I did the Spiderwick books with, is a huge Neil. Like Neil Gaiman is definitely a big part of why she does what she does. So she was, you know, very very excited when we started, you know, getting going out and promoting the Spiderwick books. I think I'm gonna start putting a little green in it. I feel like it still needs yeah, green. Agree. Like I don't know what other color. So okay, wait. Let me just stop for a second, and I'll finish the Holly Black Neil Gaiman story. I, okay, we've got we've got yellow going into orange. 
We've got a real ashy blue, which I don't mind. I kind of like. Yellow, orange, blue. The complement would be either a stronger blue or a purple. But there's kind of purple in this blue. It's kind of a purpley blue, isn't it? Or am I crazy? I'm a little colorblind and when blue goes to purple. I mean, green might be nice. I, I keep wanting to put green here. Like maybe green in the base and let it leave this alone. Or am I crazy? If I was alone and I was just doing this, I would put green in here. Dark, or brown. Dark red. I was thinking like dark. Well, I still have to do the little eye too. It's got this cool eye spot on the wings, which I definitely think we should incorporate. So maybe it's... I don't, I, yeah, I'm not feeling the green because I feel like you've already got so much yellow Yellow and there. blue. Brown. Let's try brown. With a little touch of green in it. I know, you're excited. Here's the thing. I'm not adding really many new tubes than what I used yesterday. Let me just see what this looks like. It could be completely wrong. But why I messed this painting up, I'll tell you the story of Neil Gaiman and Holly Black. So Holly was very... We had gone to um, the National Book Festival, which used to be held... Well, it still is held in Washington, D.C., but it used to be held on the Great Lawn, I want to say, or the, the National Lawn. or the and that blue... And some red. A little red? Like a deep red. Like, like, a, a like that red we used yesterday? Red. Well, let me try this. Okay. The National Mall. That's what it was on. It was the National Mall. Anyway, they have a party at the Library of Congress before, you know, with all the authors and the important authors talk and the rest of us just kind of sit and listen at a, at a dinner. And it used to be actually with the president. You would sit. It was pretty insane, actually. On, um, say the which, president didn't come to that. The, the that one, but say what you will about the Bushes, Laura Bush being a librarian really upheld children's literacy and literacy during the, his administration. And the we had a great time at those Dark those events. Cranberry sounds nice. Um, anyway, we go to the to the thing. Holly is. We just had breakfast at the White House. We had brunch at the White House. I know. I stole the napkins. From the White House. You really did. She took, she grabbed so many napkins. I, they were probably like, what are you Wait, doing? Wait, where are they? Uh, I think we put them in a... I think oh, we special. put they're them in away. A, they used to be easily accessible. I don't think they are any longer. <laughs> Had a whole stack, I She thought. did. She she really... They, she's just shoving them down her dress. <laughs> the best um, part. Wait. We, okay, well, good. Anyway, we go to the bar before... Every, or everyone's all dressed fancy, and, and we're going to the bar, and, and um, we go... And Holly... This was like early in Spiderwick, so we were just starting to do a lot of promotion. And, and, you know, Holly had one book out at that point, so she was very wide-eyed and excited about the the field. So we go, hey, there's Neil Gaiman. Let's go introduce Holly. Do you want to meet Neil? Oh, my God, I would love to meet Neil. And Neil was standing with a really famous horror writer, but we don't read horror, so we Stroud. didn't know. Stroud? Stroud? Something Stroud. But I thought Stroud was... I think that was... Straub? I don't know, I don't but know. then one Does of them. Does this make sense to you guys? I don't know. We don't yeah. read horror because I also, because I also that think, guy was... because I also think that doesn't Stephen King use a name like Stroud or? No, Stroud? it wasn't. It was... I know it wasn't Stephen King, but it was anyway. Straub. Straub. Peter no. Straub. Peter no. Stroud. Peter something. Anyway, Neil Gaiman was there talking to that guy, whoever that guy is, and we Which, walked. By the way, just like this conversation right now, where we don't remember who that guy is, he was some huge. Fans, huge a huge horror writer or whatever he was and he was like you don't know who i am oh yeah he did he was not happy was like, i'm sorry who are you and he was like you don't know who i am yeah he really like, didn't we didn't and we're like no we don't we make kids books with pictures we don't know who you are <laughs> any more than you know who we are. i actually said that to him does it have pictures in it? you did say that and to he him said no and i said well, well then how I'm sorry yeah for not knowing who you are yeah do you know who we are because we barely know who we are anyway <laughs> holly walks Jonathan up stroud Maybe. I think that's. I think that was it. I think, I think that was it. That's it. That's it. Is he right? What does he write? Okay, go ahead. Anyway, it could have been. No, isn't Jonathan Stroud who wrote like the Magicians or? You I don't know. Have two, you have Peter Straub and Jonathan Straub. Peter Straub. Okay. I think it's him. Yeah. Yes, I'm gonna go with Peter Straub for a hundred. I'm gonna um, have to Google Images so I. Can Google, Google Image. You've got a really good memory for that kind of stuff. So anyway. We walk up, Neil Gaiman's leaning against the bar. I want to introduce Holly, and he goes, Tony Dittalisi, the only artist who ever said no to me. 
No, he didn't say artist. The only man who ever The only man. No. And I'm like, oh, Neil thinks I'm a man. <laughs> Oh gosh, I've been I've graduated. Yes, I think it was Peter Straub, just so you guys know. Yes. Yes. That is it. I was... Tony DiTalisi, the only man who ever told me no. Who's ever said no to me? That's what it was. I felt really I mean he... <laughs> Hey, it's good to see you too, Neil. <laughs> Glad you're, you're... I didn't do your alphabet book, but <laughs> I remain a fan to this day, and that's the truth. And we've seen Neil on many things. In fact, years ago when we... I think he was wearing a leather jacket. (laughs) Of course he was wearing a leather jacket. I wish I had some kind of a clothing costume that I is like... Like your uniform? Yeah, yeah, like, like, oh, yeah. Well, where you're like, oh, you know, I love Sally Jesse Raphael always wore red rimmed glasses. You wear crazy glasses. I don't, I mean, crazy. I don't know if crazy is the word well, I'd mean, use. I mean, they're gray I like my hair. Thing. You're not like Elton John level. But. Well, no. Well, who who of us really is? I mean, that's 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 a certain personality to pull that off. And I'm, so I'm it, certainly not. So the question is, 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 um, is Neil as nice as, as Karina St. Martin hopes he is, even with that said? Oh, he's lovely. Absolutely. He's we've, lovely. we've done, we've done a, um, we've done events with Neil, um, we were going to hang out with him in New Mexico. And then when, here's a crazy, and this is like, let me drop this on the ground, this giant name. But when I did the event a few years back with George R. R. Martin, Neil was in New Mexico. How did he know about it, Ange? Because he texted you and said, oh, I'm going to come to Tony's well, event. Ne- um, George, George invited him. messaged him and said, Angela and Tony are in town. We were all going to go out and hang out together. But his and son his was son, his was, baby sick, was sick, I was think. Was sick, so he couldn't, he couldn't go out um, Yeah, but I was, you know... Yeah, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. He's a busy guy. He's got a lot going on. Being, you know, being Neil Gaiman, it's... He did find another artist, Craig Austin. Oh, yeah. I want to say Charles what? Vest probably did. Because no, he, he and like Charles... Chris is... Grimley or something? Oh, maybe it was Chris Grimley. You could be right. Charles Vest and him, I know, team up quite a bit. So I, it might have been Charles that did it. Um, he's teamed up with Chris Riddell, I want to say, on books. I will tell you... I went to, and Iris just said Neil is very kind, and I have to say the first time I ever met Neil Gaiman was not at an event where we were there as talent. It was a friend of mine when we lived in New York in the 90s, was a huge fan of Neil's, and I went to his event with her, sitting in the audience. There were hundreds of people there, and I have to say, Neil stayed. He had a conversation with every single person in line. He was attentive. He was thoughtful, he was sincere, and so generous with his time. I was so impressed, and I feel like even seeing people like that, who were, you know, such huge successes in the field, being so thoughtful um, and so focused on their fans, left such an impression. Yeah, yeah. We we went to a couple events of his when we lived in New York. I want to say we went to something where we were at a church. A dangerous Alphabet, illustrated by Gris Grimley. Gris Grimley ended That's up it. doing it. There it is. That's it. Um, We went to some... He was in a church, some old abandoned church yes, reading. Yes, he did a reading. He did a reading. We went to that, but it was like a rave. It was kind of strange. <laughs> Weird. Um, anyway, lovely person. We don't really talk to him much anymore. He's busy as, as we all are, but, um, we still remain fans to this day. And that that opening chapter of the graveyard book still is a master, uh, class in incredible writing that draws you in. That actually inspired the opening lines of Wandla. Was that opening description in the uh, graveyard book where he's describing the killing, I want to say of the, of the main character's family that like really inspired me. So that's you know, if you've read Wandla, it opens with Eva Nine was dying, and I was totally trying to do the <laughs> same. Do, well, not even as Neil Gaiman, but just trying to do what he did so masterfully in the Graveyard Book. Anyway, um, I feel like we're close to. I've I've incorporated some of the colors. We got a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow. It's not bad. I like it. It's a little more subdued than yesterday. But it gives us options, and let me... I let's. Like you could put patterning on that. I feel like that, too. I'm a little... Um, let me see if I can zoom out. Any, oh, I can zoom out a little more. Let me see if I can kind of line them up so we can 
kind of see them here. They're kind of, so you got the lots of pink and yellow and some green. And this one is more yellow than pink in the dress and the sleeves. Maybe they should have a baby. Maybe you put like that. And the wings yellow. here, I mean, there's a, a lot of nice things happening with this one. It's a very different palette, but it's got a nice beauty. I do feel, well, we haven't done the dot. I've been holding off on the, as I'm looking at the book here, and it's got these cool dots. And it does have this cool pattern. I was even looking at this patterning that I put in the wings here. Um, this kind of modeled hatching, I would put all in here. I'm not even gonna bother, you get the idea. But I wanna do the dot, Ange. I have to also tell you, I love that top one. It's funny, when you're holding that vivid yellow next to it, and even with your top piece upside down, it's yes. like, I want some of more of that concentrated yellow in that top one. Okay, well then that's, you know, this is what this is all about, is really kind of finding finding what it is. Sometimes you get it right on the first time, sometimes you don't, you know? I agree, a little, a I want, little red, orangey red, or even... Now if I put it, here's where it would be if it was the butterfly. Mm -hmm. But we could put it on this wing, we could put it on our dress, we could put it on, you know, we could put it anywhere. I'm gonna put it here. It feels right. I don't know. Am I crazy? No, you're not crazy, honey. I'm a little crazy. You are not crazy. I'm a little crazy. It's a little. You're a little bit funny. I'm a little bit funny. I do like the other thing. I like is this. Let me see. I gotta dilute this a little bit. Just using raw umber. It's kind of a cold. I'm trying to do this here, but here I gotta get the other one out of the way. Thank you guys for tuning in again today and every day. You guys are awesome. Just putting this, this is kind of cool, this little, that, I like that. Thanks, Rebecca Thornburg. Um, just playing with this a little bit. It's kind of, it's got these kind of spotting on the, on the edges. It's kind of cool. It's very subtle, but there's something about it. So this is just a little more subtle than the other one. It's not, there's no right or wrong. <laughs> a little bit country, a little bit rock and roll. There you go. That's us, Ange. Is it really? Yeah. I'm a little bit. Dolly. I'm a little bit Dolly. Not really. Is she country? I mean, I guess she is at her roots, but. Oh, yeah, she is country. But. From, from Pigeon Forge. But she's kind of Ten pop three. country. Like, 9 to 5? Is that country? I mean, I guess it is. Originally, you know that beginning, which is the type of... You know, it's almost that's like... That's not like Eminata's that's jug band. That's not like Eminata, but... Dun, 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 dun. She originally played that on her fingernails when she was coming up with the song. She was like clicking her nails? Yeah, she did it almost like you would do the... Um, the, what is that? The the that you would wash your clothes on the washboard. Oh, the old washboard. So she would take her she would take her nails, and that's how she found the beat. She was like, you know, like rubbing her nails. That's cool. Isn't that cool? Very cool. And that was like, but this is gonna be a typewriter. <laughs> I'm gonna put a little titanium white in here. I'm just gonna oh wrong wrong way, titanium white. I'm gonna put a little titanium white in here. Just I want to punch the whites up a little I bit. I feel like the skirt just needs like that it's, yellow it's, needs. It's to, non, it's not. It's, it's non-committal. Non it's non-committal. That's what I'm. That's why I'm gonna. I'm gonna commit. Emmett Otter, favorite oh ever Christmas movie of all time. Used to be on HBO. Used to watch it. Used to get up early on Christmas morning. Yes, Santa, I Santa would have visited already, but I have to wait because it's 5 a.m. and my parents and I made a deal yes. that says we can't wake them up until seven or six. So watch Emmett Otter. Yes, I've heard that slowed down version of Jolene. Oh, yeah, that is good, too. All right, I'm going to just punch the whites up a little bit. And what I'm looking at now is less at this butterfly. And I'm looking at this butterfly, and I'm seeing some cool things going on here, and it's making me think. <laughs> she admits her nails are fake. Dolly admits that everything is fake. They asked her how long it takes to do her hair, and she said, I don't know, I'm never there when they do it. <laughs> That's awesome. I think Elton John has the same <laughs> answer. <laughs> that is so true. Probably a lot more people have that same answer that we just don't know. Ooh, Angel Shandy. Her daughter has colored two fairies already. <laughs> in other words, her way of saying, <laughs> Dear Lizzie, my my kid has colored more fairies in the time it's taken you to do one. 
but it is uh, we are problem solving we are figuring out so um well, it is also it's tuesday it's tuesday it's tuesday we got all week we're gonna get it there we're gonna get there and i want that yellow just in that ends of the skirt too I mean, yes 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 together. yes i i'm i think you and i are starting to see this is why i want to get some of the white back in here right and I, if this was the actual painting, I would maybe even consider rubbing it out. Like I just wet the brush and lift the pigment out. But th because we're just working on a, on a color study on paper, that's not an option. It's just going to shred the paper. So I'm just going to put a little white in here to see if that's going to give me what I want. And maybe it will and maybe it won't. The other thing I'm looking at is there's some really cool spots happening all in the hair. So I'm going to try to do that really quick. And then tomorrow we'll do another one and maybe three times the charm or maybe by the third one we are sick of it and we're like just go with the first one tony you really you had it you had me at a pink orchid any questions why i'm noodling yeah do you get um do, do, do. would you consider replacing the shadow on the yellow wing with white uh the shadow on the yellow wing this making this white that's what they're referring to. No. I want the darks around to like lead you towards the face. That's why I'm reluctant to put anything really dark on this outer part of the skirt. I don't I don't want your eye to go here. I just want this to complement. It's funny looking at it on this tiny screen. It concentrates it. Yes. Well, listen, let's be honest. I'm also just enjoying. I'm listening to music and I'm talking to you and our friends here and I'm just putting paint down and I'm enjoying it. I'm That's enjoying it. Matters. Hey, listen, Iris is here. Molly Porridge, Eric Burker, Dave Peterson. We're all here. We're here. We're doing this together. It does feel We're like in this Amber, together. I, Lee Edward Fody said. Yeah, Lee Edward, Edward Fody. Which, by the way, let me personally, while you can hear my voice, thank you, Lee. You are always very supportive of, of things that I do on social media. You're always commenting and... I do I do try to remember names of of people. I feel very appreciative, uh, especially in this time. Jolene, no, oh, sorry, Joelle. See, I got jo I got Dolly on the brain. Jo Joelle wants to know. Joelle M. Wilcom, Wilcom, and bienvenue. Wilcom wants to know what's going to happen to this painting when it's finished. Oh, what indeed, Ange? What will happen to this painting when it's finished? What you know what? Can you do a blue one tomorrow? Somebody said maybe you could do a blue one tomorrow. You know my favorite butterfly? It's the blue morpho. The blue morpho over the rainforest of, of the Amazon? I love the blue morpho. I like a blue azure. Uh -huh. That's the ones in New England. Oh, yeah, I know that one, too. Do you? Uh, blue morpho, that's pretty electric. Something, that's pretty... It doesn't have to be that one, but something blue. I do like that idea, too. Okay. I'm just waiting all this out because I'm going to try to put some of that yellow on the fringe here, Ange. Just bear with me. And this, again, is either going to make it awesome or I'm going to completely ruin it. But I'm thinking that yellow. And now, How what's... Is, and so, just, you're not drying it right now. Just curious. This is why am I not drying it? Asking, well, yeah. yeah, I'm not drying it because I want the yellow to blend in with... It, you can see it's a very wet yellow. It's not very opaque. It's like lemonade. And so I want it to mix with the other the paint that's already there. And again, color study. I don't know if on the final I'll be this. I just want you to plop all that in. Mm -hmm. I'm just seeing. You like that? Yes. I you want like that in all of that little. And then I'm thinking like even your shadows. You've got some blue in there, but I think you could pump that up more. And now we can pump the blue up. Yeah. Well, this whole patterning, I think now we can start to play with a little bit of blue. Let me tape it. What's my favorite Bowie song? Ooh, I still oh. love Ashes to Ashes. Because I love that it continues the story of Major Tom, and I loved the video as a kid. It's so oh. weird. That's a really hard one. Diamond Dogs, so good. It's like, who else did, you know, not many artists did like dystopian stories in a song. Well... Talk to me, Ange. Tell me. Inquiring minds want to know. Inquiring minds want to you know. know. David Bowie wants... Don't say that. Come on. 
You got more than that. No, the only reason... I have special attachments to different Bowie songs. Okay. okay. I love that song because Soph loved it when she was little. Yes. And there's a video of her singing, singing it in it. a fake microphone. And so I have such fun. You're right. Memories. That is pretty cool. It's pretty cool when your kid is that. We listened to Bowie. I was a big Bowie fan in art school and high school. Love Golden Years. Oh, yeah. Golden Years is good. TVC15. Um... It was Sophia's love of Bowie. I want more blue. You're going really gray. This is blue. Let me hear. I'll get some more blue. All right. It's this for you. I'm going to bust it's out. It's very some... gray. Well. This is just. I, listen, I know you're the artist and you're the one physically painting. You want that? No. You want that? Yes. That's. This is a potent blue. Well, just then put a touch in whatever that shadow was. How right? about the smalt? It's a little. Got a, I'd almost say it's a little purpley. There's a star nine. Waiting in the sky. Um, waiting in the sky. So, yeah, it was Sophia who really rekindled our, our Bowie love. And that was because of Labyrinth. Labyrinth. Let she me tell you. She was obsessed with Labyrinth. We watched Labyrinth so many times. So many times. That we started, that's when we started seeing the hidden Bowies in the Labyrinth movie. Like, wait, there's more hidden Bowie faces than just the one... When he comes out and talks to um, Hoggle, and it's in the rock, you realize there's hidden Bowies everywhere in that movie, um. like in the shrubbery and the topiaries and the rocks and the walls, and that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Quick side story. So when I worked on the Adventures of Luke Skywalker book, which used Ralph McQuarrie's artwork, who was the original concept artist for Star Wars, went to the... Um, Lucasfilm Archive. Ooh, this is a good story. We got, we got our little stories. Got stories. You you forget we have all these stories, Angie, and we don't tell them too Mel often. Burker, Burker, uh, there are hidden Bowies in Labyrinth. Google it. Google it. Your, you're, mind, uh, yeah, you're be, your, your you're, mind will be blown. You're not going to believe how many hidden... his face. That face in the rocks when he's talking... In the scene where he's talking to Hoggle. It's a very kind of iconic Bowie face. That face is hidden throughout the whole movie. There's like seven of them in it. Oh, yeah. It's, it's really rocks, cool. It's in bushes. It's... When they're escaping from the, uh, oh, what's it called? When they're in the underground catacomb and Coggle's like, it's a... Oh, the, 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 the labyrinth's full of them. And when they're climbing out of the, the oubalette, there's one right in the rock walls right there. It's pretty cool. It's anyway, cool. so we, um, you know, we became... I became friendly with the folks who ran Lucasfilm's archive. It's it's just an amazing place to see the Love props the and, and the and the thing. Yeah, this definitely took see? it to a Yeah, it's cool. Well, because blue and yellow. It looks very uh I vintage spider. It looks like something I would have done while I was actually painting the field. But guide. even the saturation level on that the amberness on that tip of the wing, you It's bringing it out now. And the you blue need is to push that more. On well, the some blues the other. Yeah, the blues picking is kicking it up. It's reacting to it. So we, um, they have also, you know, Ralph McQuarrie didn't just do concept arts. He also did background paintings, matte paintings for the films. So, you know, if they, before computers, they would, mm -hmm. you know, if they needed a, the Millennium Falcon in a hangar, it was a painting and the actors just kind of acted in front of uh, nothing. And then they would kind of add it in through some uh, photography tricks that I'm, uh, we don't have time for me to explain, but. Um, we're at an hour and two minutes right yeah, now. Yeah, we are. Just FYI. So anyway, um, they have the all these background um, matte paintings are done on glass. They're actually done on shower doors. There was a shower door that was very easily uh, found back in the 70s and 80s that, that the, the production team used for Star Wars and all the Star Wars films and right up until Labyrinth. And so these um, these... Background paintings are in storage, and I asked the archivist of the Lucasfilm Archive if they had any background paintings for Labyrinth, and they said yes. So she pulled it out um, so I could see, and it was one of the one of the hedges, and I said, oh, this one has a hidden Bowie in it. And she was like, well, what are you talking about? So I explained what I just told you about the hidden Bowies, and also explained that the only reason I know about the hidden Bowies is because we watched this movie 900 times with Sophia. And... Um, they marked it. They updated the um, archive, the archive with no. Hidden Bowie, and then they were then going to go look at what other map paintings they had, and if they had Hidden Bowies. 
That's cool. So after I'm done, I will dig up. They let they don't let you normally take photos in the archive um, for reasons that I frankly don't know. But um, she was she just did give me a photo. She did take a photo of me with the bat, matte painting, and I will post it so you guys can see me with the hidden Bowie. One of the hidden, many hidden Bowies. Where's the yellow go? I feel like it on her hand. Yeah, and also coming down. But I like, don't feel like it, it gets stronger than this. This It doesn't always... get stronger than that, but that's where it's at. Like, and that will... Bring the whole party together, yes. and, then, and then you play the music, and you cue me out, yeah. and then we do it again tomorrow. Yes, yes, yes. What do you guys think of that? And did don't forget... Did you have fun today? Did you enjoy... Our time together. I hope you did. We did. We did. We I had a good. Hidden bowies. We learned about hidden bowies and really, you learn, learned about you learned about hidden me's. And I'm, you learned about the only man who ever told Neil Gaiman no. I'm the only man who told him <laughs> no. Ask Holly Black; she'll tell you all about it. This is my really bad Bowie voice. <laughs> it's really a bad. Everyone one. needs hidden Bowies. Every <laughs> Sarah. Come I'd on. say hide a bowie in your shower. Hide a bowie in your bathroom. <laughs> David Bowie's hiding everywhere. Hide you know he's hiding. Bowie in your blender. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that mowing my lawn? <laughs> it's me, David Bowie. You know it's me. You've wanted me to mow your lawn for years now. You're laughing because it sounds I'll nothing trip, like I'll David. I'll your hedges. <laughs> <laughs> me and this... And Hogwarts, Hoggle, <laughs> whatever, we will mow your lawn. Hey, by the way, Hogwarts, he was called Hogwarts. He calls him Hogwarts. He calls him Hogwarts. How about he calls, that? He calls him Hogwarts. You guys go watch Labyrinth, and David Bowie calls Hoggle Hogwarts. Oh, Hogwarts. Hogwarts, that would make an excellent name for a school of witchcraft and wizardry. <laughs> I'm putting a little bit of that white. I love that pure titanium. Remember how yesterday how I said I never used pure titanium white? I lied. There you go. There's a little pure titanium white. Um, I'm going to use a little more right on the wings here just to what pump. About, what about your yellow? Your deeper yellow? I did the deep. No, no, that's it. You don't. That's it. That's where it lives. You don't push Look it anywhere it. else. Okay, maybe on her toes. Yes, thank you. That's, that's exactly what I want. There it is. That's what I want. You want to know. David, I want some yellow. I'm David Bowie tell. wants the yellow. He says, put it right there. I a little bit on. I a hedge. There you go, Hoggle. Today was um, your fave so far, Chris Burns. You're like, well, wow. I've never been here before, but, <laughs> but this is my favorite. Not day. bad. The price of admission was pretty good. <laughs> it is roughly. There we go. I'm going to put the extra gold I got here in the wings. Watch Labyrinth. You guys, take yourself, you want to take yourselves out of reality and continue our fantastical adventure that we've been on today? Go watch Labyrinth. Go watch. I implore you to go watch and Labyrinth. And think about the handcrafted wizardry of when Jim Henson. making that film. And tomorrow, Ange, remind me, I can share with them a labyrinth story yes, where that's gouache he's using Jim. i'm using gouache actually i'm using acrylic gouache tell them all about david bowie it's a mixture of gouache and acrylic and you won't believe the results i sound like a lounge guy and not david bowie right. at all i don't sound like david bowie but it is made by holbein i love it i've been painting with it for 20 years um want to know what the who's today's Who's today's winner? Who's, Who's gonna win this one? The trash. I gotta date this sucker. Today is today's four fourteen. Oh, Here we go. Color study number two. By the way, let's also take a moment just to applaud Emily C. Martin for getting that fans the group. are drawn to fantasy together. Yes, the group. You guys, the art is looking amazing. Luke Mercer wants to know what age do we reckon kids can cope with Labyrinth? Now, listen, mm -hmm. ages vary. Everyone has a little bit of a different, like, Agreed. listen, me and the kids watched Exorcist this weekend, and they thought it was hilarious when her head spun around. No. And, um, Soph was around, I want to say eight, around eight. Yeah, I would say that's... that's Ca you know what? Go to commonsensemedia.org or .com. Com com I don't know. Just, I don't know. Common Sense, Common Sense Media. Common Sense Media is like, that was our go-to. Recommendations are pretty accurate on there, but I think she was in fourth grade, and then like it caught like wildfire throughout the whole the school. Class. Well, we did the play. 
We did a full play. We did a summer play of Labyrinth. She wanted to do a play one summer, so you know what? We delivered, and we did that. Maybe we'll bust out the puppets from the Labyrinth play tomorrow. You guys are amazing. Who's our winner, Inch? Okay, our winner today is... Let me make sure that this person... Has, I have to look at the Wins list. the garbage. Oops, sorry, that's me bumping it. Sorry, guys. That's all right. Okay. Who's we'll the winner? See. Who's the winner? If you want to listen to me yammer on more, mm -mm. you can go into Into the Ultra. That's uh, Facebook, Into the Ultra. Mm -hmm. Easy. Tomorrow, Andrew will be on XM Live in the morning at 9.30 at uh, Kids Place Live. At 2 o'clock, I'll be at Facebook, Simon Kids reading Kenny and the Dragon, and eating homemade creme brulee before we paint fairy number three for you. Please join me in congratulating Andy Robinson. Andy Robinson winner. is winning. To the list of Andy recyclables. Robinson, you are winning. Please send me a direct message, Andy, with your mailing address, and I will send you some recyclable garbage. Thank you guys for tuning in. We wish you continued health, wellness. Inspiration. Stay safe. And uh, remember, you only have 13 hours to complete the labyrinth. It's more difficult than you think. Be well. Take care. And thank you for joining us on Realms 2 Fantasy. Wait, Realms? Drawn! Drawn, that too. <laughs> I'm in the realms. I'm in the realms. Every day I'm in the realms. What? Re Should we cut it and do it again? David Bowie says, oh. drawn, drawn to, drawn to, fantasy. fantasy.